all the incredible credits you have, Mike, for uh, albums, you also have uh, movie soundtracks. And I loved uh, the ACDC work for uh, Iron Man 2. And I was wondering, um, what do you do different for a soundtrack from your role than you do for like an album? You know, most of the soundtracks that I think my mixes are on were probably just pulled <coughs> from the albums for that okay. and then added or licensed on or whatever. Uh, right. A lot of times when I'm mixing, I'll also mix, um, I don't like mixing stems. So stems or, you know, a separate drum track, a separate guitar, a separate, you know, uh, but I will do instrumentals, so no lead vocals or stuff like that. So sometimes they'll use portions of those for soundtracks. But for the Iron Man, and I, um, you know, I can't remember what ended up in the in the movie, but originally the whole movie was going to be completely ACDC. Like wow! No, no other no other songs. I don't think wow. it ended up that way. Yeah. But uh, they sent me the the all the. Uh, all the music for all of uh, Back in Black. Mm. So I, I got the multi-track tapes, but, you know, obviously years later, you know, the, the, the actual physical tapes are probably not getting in very good shape, but they had transferred it to, to Pro Tools at, at 192 mix. So I had to work in 192. Wow. wow. So I got to remix basically all of Back in Black for that movie. So I had to mix the song, but... I had to do it so in this section, oh, they wanted the vocal out here, they wanted that. And so I had to, you know, match it pretty damn close to the whole record. So that was that was a lot of fun to do. And uh, I've got to tell you on that, on on back and black, you know, Ang's wailing away, soloing away in the tag there as as a song fades out and he's, you know, well, that goes on for probably another minute and a half and it gets better. The soloing gets better, but they couldn't keep yeah, it. Yeah. Really, the band starts falling apart and they couldn't have faded it out. So uh, I was pretty sure I did myself a mix of that without the fade, but I can't find it to this day. <laughs> but it was pretty incredible. That was, that was different. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Do you make any different decisions um, when you're doing a soundtrack for like theater positioning, like surround sound and that kind of thing compared to making an album? For that one, I was not asked to do like a, a theater mix for the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, right. It's just all strictly stereo. Uh, they'll put in their stereo thing and then they do all their... Have you done that? Uh, I, I do for um, like live DVDs. I mix in surround. Mm -hmm. But my philosophy for that is you're, we're all looking at the stage. The band's going bombastic. So basically what I do is I do a, a, a wide stereo. So instead of stereo hit me like this, you know, I'll go sort of three and nine o'clock and then that's the band. Mm. But the real magic to me with a live rock format for DVD, you know, surround is you got to have as many um, vocal mics as you can out there because then you can, place it all there like if you've got 12 vocal mics behind you when that one guy whistles he's there you know what i'm saying if oh you know, the crowd you mean crowd mics yeah if you've only got four well that whistle is in probably two of those so he's sort of here but when you can put him there or put him there or put him there it really makes it fools your brain into like, yeah, I'm at the show, man. This is great. And wow. so that's more important than what, the, what you're hearing from the band, because, you know, I've seen some, some live stuff, even of, of some small stages and, and I won't mention the band, but you know, they walk in and, Oh man, this sounds fantastic. And, Oh, there's the acoustic guitar player there, but he's hitting me in the here, my ear behind. So I was like, why is the, acoustic guitar here when I see him that, like it doesn't make sense to me yeah if I'm watching a surround sound of a live show I'd want to hear the crowd behind me the way I would in a live show yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's that's brilliant I never thought about that yeah. about the exact Bob position. Clear Mountain had a, had a great experience doing the, the Rolling Stones thing I've read a few things about him with uh, was it Martin Scorsese that, that directed the, the live Stones thing or whatever so bob was doing the mixes and martin went, no no it's not right not right and bob was pulling his ear out so they finally had a a meeting about it and he goes you know he says when i cut to the drum set he says 
that's what I want to hear is when I cut to the, the shot of, the, of, of uh, Watts on his drums, he says, I want the drums to be right there. And then the guitar is over here. So he had Bob mix uh, in segments that were according to his cuts. And Bob says, well, I don't know what you're cutting. So, so they figured out how to do a rough cut of the whole movie, how it was basically going to be. And then Bob had to mix to that. So each segment of his mix, he had to change to what the camera perspective was. So it was like uh, you or I were now wherever the camera went, that's where our ears were. So that's what you heard. It wasn't the music <laughs> and different cuts of the band, like all our modern videos are. It's like, and I've never seen it, so I don't know. <laughs> that, that, that just reminds me of those shredded videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got those shredded videos where you'll see as, as the pa camera pans the drums, you hear, tsh, tsh, tsh. <laughs> and it go, as the camera pans by, the drums disappear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I laugh at that stuff. Hey, thanks for joining us. Check out our other vignettes and full episodes from a wide variety of guests for more great content. Please like, share, and subscribe, and become a member at socialenergypresents.com to access premium content and earn valuable energy points just for watching.